As you drive along Souk River Road, just south of Souk, British Columbia, you'll follow alongside the river while connecting through two separate parks, Souk Potholes Provincial Park and Souk Potholes Regional Park. You'll first enter the Provincial Park, which is comprised of over seven acres along both sides of the Souk River. This section of the river is more serene, dropping across some shallow rocky ledges and gravel beds where you'll often find people fishing, lounging, and swimming all months of the year. Beyond this point, you enter Souk Potholes Regional Park, which covers an additional 63.5 hectares along the river. In this area of the river, the water plunges through a narrow rock canyon and over a series of waterfalls before flattening out in the Provincial Park section. This unique rock formation that was formed from the last ice age millions of years ago forms what's known as the potholes. The potholes found in this part of the river are unique geological formations, which are actually deep, polished rock pools carved into the bedrock of the river by the swirling waters, gravel, and stones. As you explore the area around the potholes, you will notice a large stone ruin on top of the cliffs, looking out over the stunning river views. These ruins were once part of a dream, and was destined to become a spectacular luxury resort. This resort was to be called the Deer Trail Resort. Just approaching inside the boundaries of the resort now. Um, this is it. Yeah. Well, obviously everyone has their opinions on graffiti. I think one of the best parts about coming to this place is seeing the change in all the graffiti that people do here, all the artwork. I've been coming here for about eight years now. First time I came was in 2014. And the first couple times I would come here, this beam connected across from up here to over there where the fireplace was and if you were agile enough and could get up top here somehow using all the actual that uh, using all the other walls nearby you could come across this beam sit over by that fireplace that was one of my favorite spots but now it's pretty hard to get to unless you have a ladder Nick Cage, Ghost Rider, total classic, best superhero of all time. And over the years that I've been coming here, it's crazy to see how much all these trees, all these Christmas trees with inside have grown. Before you could see the whole resort, by standing in one place you could pretty much see everything, but now you have to actually walk through it all. It's all hidden behind trees.
this metal here used to extend out. You can see where it's been cut off. It used to extend about five feet out there just into a single beam. And me being not the smartest at times, I would often walk out there and you hang over the cliff side. It's just crazy. Every corner, there's something to see. Here you can see the, the stonework that was put into this place. Crazy. Just imagine this was your kind of main hallways and everything all throughout the resort. This is how you would be walking through places of just massive stonework above you. Would have been something to see if it had been completed. One of the main features of this resort was supposed to be this fireplace. It's supposed to be the biggest fireplace, wood burning fireplace in all of Canada. Big enough to grill an ox, as one article states. Massive vent above going to the chimney. Lights in every corner. This definitely would have been something to see. Not entirely sure if this was for comfort purposes, like it looks like kind of stairs or benches around the corners. If you have huge burning logs here, I can't see you sitting only three feet away from it. It just doesn't make sense to me, but I guess we'll never know. Um, okay. I'm gonna make my way down the side of the building here. Hopefully you can still hear me with all the river rushing. To me, this right here is the best part of the whole resort or lack thereof of resort. See if I, in the old photos, I'll put some photos up. You can see an old turret standing here, like a gazebo thing. And then just, I just love the fact that these stairs here are built right into the side of the rock. Like, the architecture of it's unreal. Basically, this spot is numero uno to me. I don't know how to explain why it is. Um, I don't know. Yeah, but basically, I think when I first came here, it kind of reignited or fully started, I'm not sure, this whole drive to find all these abandoned places, explore all these abandoned places, because I think it started when I was younger, had this also a resort at my hometown 
that I used to bike to when I was a kid with my sister and everything. And then that's the only really abandoned place I would go other than houses. But then in 2014, ex-girlfriend of mine happened to find out about this place from some co-workers. We came out here and I immediately fell in love with it. I just, it's one of those places that I'll continue to come to at least once a year just to check in on it because it's so cool to me. I want to see it as many times as I can until it's gone. Um, very small vocabulary so I can't describe everything that I like about it but it's like actual ruins not like you know, Greece, Italy, Rome level type ruins but at the same time it's just here along the riverside gorgeous location in the summertime this river's filled with people swimming in the falls and everything but then you come here in the fall and it's just lush green everywhere it's gorgeous it's the history to it is it's interesting to me so I thought I'd share that. Uh, anyways, yeah, I think I'm gonna get out of here. Cool. I don't have my microphone or gimbal hooked up right now, but it's just hilarious. You literally can just go around this fence right here and there's pretty much a trail into the area, into the resort area, yet people still cut the fence to make holes and then Parks comes by and this is how they patch up the holes, just put plywood over it. But like this whole wall, <laughs> this is crazy now. Like, walk an extra 30 seconds, you'll get in easier and not have to go through all this brush once you're inside. Interesting. Like down there. Focus. Crazy. Okay, bye. All this viewpoint is mainly for the the potholes themselves to view them in winter and summer t summer months. To me, this is the best angle possible that you can get of the resort without using a drone. You can see the stairs coming down the side there of the rock work where there used to be a, a turret. Is that what they're called? There used to be a little gazebo thing on the corner there, and I don't know what it is about this angle, but it's, it's my favorite. Plus you can see how large this property actually was. How it extends out onto the side here through the trees. And then I don't know if it'll show up on camera, but you can see further down there, there's some little areas throughout the trees as well. Just gives you a great understanding of what could have been here. Early in the 1980s, Victoria resident Albert Yeen and his wife purchased a 160-acre parcel of rocky treed terrain alongside the Soup River and the falls. The Yeans saw an opportunity for an innovative and fairly ambitious development. With its beautiful location and one of the most spectacular river views on Vancouver Island, the Yeen vision incorporated the use of natural stone, vegetation, and local Douglas fir timbers. This project and the drive behind it quickly attracted a lot of attention and construction would commence immediately after purchasing the land. The Yeans envisioned a full support infrastructure for their guests with over 200 luxury rooms, a pool, a spa, and even access to in-house shopping outlets. The centerpiece of the property was planned to be the Timber Lodge, which would play host to Canada's largest log brain fireplace that was described as large enough to cook an ox. While construction of the resort was rolling during the early years, the Yin's vision could only carry them so far. A lack of investor dollars eventually sunk their ambitions and what had been built of the resort was left to crumble. The 
resort would sit vacant for many years until the Tyrian infrastructure would become unsafe. In 2004, the property would be acquired as parkland by the Capital Regional District, and the partially constructed lodge buildings were stripped down to their stonework. Today, the stone-built framework is being overtaken by nature, and the walls are slowly becoming colorful canvases tucked away in the forest. Abandoned and crumbling along the cliffside, the ruins of Deer Trail Resort is now a colorful canvas where urban art, a failed dream, and the power of nature beautifully collide.